Next up, it's time to modify a water gun into a super sized soaker. This is awesome. This is Mark Rober's epic water pistol. This would be a great way to water the garden if you wanted to cut down some trees. This monster gun measures seven feet long and fires water out at an incredible 272 miles per hour. This thing is eight times the pressure of a fire truck. I so want to play with it. So how do you make a supersized water weapon? Mark got the help of some friends to scale this up from an original toy water gun. He built up the frame from wood and PVA foam, put the internal workings inside, and the whole thing took him about six months. The green container on top is just for show, so he's placed all the weight of the gun in the lower handle compartment. This water pistol gets its firepower from two tanks in the handle. One of them is full of nitrogen gas, the other is full of water. The nitrogen gas is kept at a high pressure in the tank. So when the valve opens, it wants to equalize the pressure with the surroundings. And the only place to go is to the water tank. As the nitrogen crowds into the water tank, it pushes down on the water, but water can't be compressed. It has to go somewhere. And the only place it can go is out a tube which connects the bottom of the water tank to the front of the gun. This thing is military grade. Yes, yeah, so let's see the super soaker in a combat situation. It's no contest until he runs out of water. We're off to Russia for an entirely new spin on the toy car. I love to see kids play with a fidget spinner, but I never thought I'd see someone try it with a few cars. Yes, these big kids are Russian Collective Garage 54. They're attempting to modify three cars into an enormous fidget spinner. Ooh, fidget spinner. Now that's what I call ride sharing. The boys have earned over a million hits with their motorized mod. Let's head to our garage of science for the breakdown. They've taken three front wheel drive cars because they still need to be able to drive them. They've cut them in half and welded them together in the center. The guys reattached the cars using an arc welder. This technique allows them to fuse metals together using intense heat of up to 6,500 degrees Fahrenheit, 3,600 degrees Celsius. Once the metal melts, it joins the two pieces of material, making two pieces of metal into one. The cars are reattached with each one facing outward and each one 120 degrees from its neighbor. All that's left to do is to test it out, but they quickly discover a little bit of an issue with their execution. For it to go around and around on the spot like they wanted, the wheels would have to be pretty much sideways, and the steering simply doesn't go that far. Nearly there, but not quite nailed it, guys. It's still really cool. I mean, they really went for this. They cut up whole cars, welded them together, and gave this a really good go. Better luck down the road, guys. What do you get if you cross a rocket? Dangerous. And a knife. Dangerous. It's David Windestall's rocket knife. Very dangerous. Nothing to worry about. It's just a machete with a rocket. <laughs> and it annihilates everything in its path. Yes, from a giant gummy rat. Batteries. To 50 lighters. This is madness. What makes this rocket knife a cut above the rest? This crazy machine is a combination of a blade from a machete and a homemade rocket. The rocket is made of stainless steel. It's affixed to a carbon fiber plate and held onto the rail using skateboard wheels. It looks so professional, doesn't it? Shiny. The homemade rocket's power comes from the incredibly hot exhaust gases being forced at the back of it, which propels it forward up to a speed of 125 miles per hour. That's 200 kilometers an hour, achieved in only 0.3 of a second. To ensure the maximum destruction, David has built his track to be 40 feet or 12 meters long. And that is how far the rocket travels before it stops burning its fuel. This means that it will hit the object at the end at its maximum speed. 
The lightweight knife hits the watermelon with a force of about 600 newtons. This is the equivalent of about 132 pounds or 60 kilograms. Now we just need a rocket fork and a rocket spoon, and we've got a rocket-powered cutlery set. You just cut straight through that thing, and it's crazy. The angle is way off. Yeah, that knife. Like they had to wobble, wobble like, like crazy. yeah. The track is not terribly straight. Even though the knife is made of hardened steel, it met its match with a bowling ball. The ball was so dense and had so much mass that the knife wasn't able to penetrate it. But before it broke, it did take a decent chunk off the side of it. Oh! oh it just broke the it just right off. These modified flamethrowers are lighting up the internet with over 2 million views. This is so cool. Punch activated flamethrowers. Can you make flames come out of my hands? Sure. Here it comes. I make my own sound effects. Listen, give us another speed on it. Let's see how Alan turns punches into flames. To make his fire fists, Alan uses a butane torch. The butane is kept under high pressure and then released past an arc lighter. The arc lighter creates a spark of electricity, igniting the butane gas, creating these awesome fireballs. The clever engineering here is that these devices only shoot out their flames when he's throwing a punch. To make this happen, Alan has used accelerometers. An accelerometer is a sensor that can detect the change in acceleration that results from a punch. To make sure that the gloves only fire when intended, Alan has calibrated them to sense punches. A punch has a very simple characteristic. It's a fast acceleration followed by a fast deceleration. So they only fire when they have a large forward motion followed by a very fast deceleration. Great stuff. Unless you're Alan's cameraman. 우주에서 가장 재미있는 채널 디스커버리.